Hello everybody, it's 2019 and I thought that a lot of you guys might be thinking about getting into YouTube or getting into streaming, whether it's uh, on Twitch or YouTube, and you might be thinking about buying a PC or something along those lines in order to be able to do that. So I thought that I would make this video to try and help you guys out with some options some costings potentially um, and just some options for you guys to have a look at and see um, because I think nowadays it's more it's way simpler than it ever has been to record and upload videos to YouTube and to stream on Twitch or YouTube or any other platform you want mixer or anything like that um, now I'll preface this to say that I am not you know there there will be people who disagree with the options I'm giving you guys here or have different stories and everything at the end of the day comes down to kind of personal choice especially when it comes to PC parts people have a preference for one thing or another you know they will have anecdotal you know evidence about this thing or that thing um, so you know bear in mind that everything here is just really an opinion um, of what I've learned from um, you know streaming and recording videos over the last three years on YouTube and a little bit on Twitch. So we're on PC Part Picker here which is a really good um, website if you're thinking of getting a PC and potentially building it yourself or just to kind of cost out a PC because you can obviously buy pre-built PCs um, there's many different manufacturers who will do that for you. What you have to understand is that that will cost you more than if you build the PC yourself. It kind of makes sense because someone has to build it for you. Um, now, obviously, for a lot of people, they're slightly terrified of building their own PC. I understand. It was scary when I first did it. But I will say that nowadays it's easier than ever. All parts are pretty much standardized. And um, there are so many guides around on the Internet to help you out that, you know, it's it's easier than it ever has been. So, um, what PC Parker Pick is always good for as well is if you are thinking of buying a PC, you know, pre-built, then you can put the specs in here with all the parts that it has, and then you could see how much that would cost you. And you could see if it's. I think if you're buying a pre-built PC, ideally you're not going to be wanting to spend, um, say, a hundred to hundred fifty pounds more than the parts individually once you get to that point i think you can you you are starting to get to a point where it's you know not an ideal situation so for example if you spec'd out a pc on here and it came to 750 pounds and you were buying the pc for um say a thousand pounds off a website you may want to check elsewhere for that deal because um it shouldn't really be that much more expensive um to buy a pre-built some manufacturers will charge you a premium for things which you probably don't need um, so yeah um, kind of bear that in mind so let's talk about streaming and recording and how it works so recording and streaming really they're two different things um, when you record videos you, it's, it's a lot easier on your PC so if you perhaps don't have um, that great PC that you you're playing on it's it's easier generally to record than it is to stream um, because streaming is generally a little bit harder on your system your graphics card and your cpu and when we talk about um, the effect that recording and streaming has primarily it will be upon your cpu and your graphics card that you have so with recording um, depending on what graphics card you have and the two supplies of graphics card amd and nvidia um, each have their own proprietary software um, which you can use to record um, both do a really good job and there you don't get much loss in performance from using that software there is third-party software as well you can use such as OBS um, XSplit stuff like that I've used OBS a little bit and it's pretty good it's not as user-friendly as something like shadow play um, but it does allow you to tinker a little bit more with advanced settings to try and get a slightly better quality and certainly for streaming I'd say it's better because of the options you get for overlays etc etc so primarily for recording 
I use Shadow Play because I have an NVIDIA graphics card, which I'm actually recording this with now. Um, I can't show the options in it because I'm recording on it and it doesn't let you do that. But um, you can record up to 4K, up to 60 frames per second with it. Um, and it doesn't impact your performance too badly at all. Maybe you're going to lose, you know, top end 4K, 60, you're going to lose a few frames. Um, you know five or six but that's not too bad and if you are playing a game at 4k 60 frames per second you've generally got a pretty good pc um, on there the ideal sweet spot you want to hit for being able to record on youtube i would honestly say is 1080p 60 frames per second the reason for that nowadays is that the majority of people watch uh, YouTube videos on their mobile phones. Mobile phones generally have at least a 720p um, display, at the very least. Um, most of the time a 1080p going up to a 2K, which is 1440p. Um, there's very few smartphones out there with a 4K display. And because of the size of the display on phones as well, with you know most of them aren't much bigger than about a six inch display, the difference between 1080p and 1440p watching it, a video is not that noticeable. So I believe that 1080p, from my personal opinion, is the sweet spot for hitting YouTube videos. As in, if you were going to say, what's the base kind of like, but lowest base I would want to go for would probably be 1080p 60. If you, I would say that if you couldn't quite hit that, then lower it down maybe to 720p 60. I think the 60 frames per second nowadays is more important to people than the up res from 720 to 1080p. Would be my opinion. Um, some people might disagree. But um, I think if as most traffic on YouTube comes through mobile phones nowadays and the size of the display is smaller, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be as noticeable from a resolution jump. Um, as it would be from a frames per second jump because you have a much smoother um, gameplay and I mean generally for people playing a, a game as well if they record if they're playing it in 60 frames per second you're going to be recording it in 60 frames if you can't play a game at 60 um, then you know you could drop it down to 30 just to get a steady frame rate because that's pretty important you don't want to have a jumpy video on there so yeah I think that's the the sweet spot so in order to be able to kind of achieve that um, that level, um, you're going to need uh, probably I'd say a mid uh, to kind of mid to budgety build uh, PC. If you were streaming, you'd need something a little bit more powerful. You can also go for a dual PC setup, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But you would want something. Um, a little bit more powerful to stream with because the actual kind of encoding and uploading to stream plus you're kind of running you'd probably want to be running the um, you know your chat and everything like that overlays potentially and all that type of stuff will add to the um, the work that your CPU and graphics card are having to do so bear that in mind um, with a kind of streaming PC compared to a recording PC um, the other thing to, to that is vitally important and probably goes without saying is an internet connection that is pretty good. If you are looking to upload, you probably, if you, even if you have the best computer out there, you will be limited by what your internet connection is able to do in terms of the bitrate you can upload with. So bitrate is really quality of video. Think of it like that. It's a very simplistic view and some people might disagree with that, but generally the higher the bitrate, the better the quality of video. Not always the worst case, but generally that's what it is and to have a higher bit rate you would um, need to have a hefty uh, internet connection some people do some people have those like gigabit internet connections now some people like me are stuck with a slightly worse um, one like I think my max is around about 25 to 30 megabytes per second which is decent and totally streamable but um, yeah it's it, we're not quite there in the UK yet with gigabit connection. Um, yeah, so that kind of bear that in mind. Um, if you, uh, so let's have a look, I guess, at um, what I would kind of build. We're going to go for a kind of a streaming PC here because, as I said, with recording wise, generally, if you can play the game at settings, you can record it at those settings if you're using like Shadow Pay or something like that. Um, with streaming, it's a little bit different um, 
on there. So if we were going for a CPU, and this will help to kind of price out, I guess, as well. If I was streaming nowadays and I wanted to build a kind of budget, and, and this is what I'm going for here, I could I could put in all the parts for the best PC there ever and, and go with that. But what we want to have a look at here is something that's kind of budget orientated um, for people out there to kind of like have a look at. If I was going for something fairly budget orientated, um, but still could kind of pack enough punch, my options would be, um, well, obviously on the CPU, your option is AMD or Intel, right? There's no one else. <laughs> sorry. If you don't like either of those companies, I'm sorry. Um, and ideally, if you're going Intel, you would want at least an i5, um, prime, ideally an i7, um, but at least an i5. And if you were going for an AMD Ryzen, you would want at least the Ryzen 5, potentially the 7. As for which one you would go for, um, this would entirely depend upon your budget. Um, but I would honestly say that something like the Ryzen 5 2600 would, would be able to get you, um, would be able to handle it. Ryzen CPUs are better than Intel at, um, if you're looking at kind of like pounds per performance, they're better at Intel generally at multitasking. So, and for production work. So, from a streaming point of view, they're generally a little bit better than a um, Intel uh, uh, for streaming, if you were looking at price. But once you start getting up to the heavy lifting, like Intel, like an i7, a 700K or something like that, or even the 9 series, um, yeah, they're probably going to, they're, they're pretty much going to wipe the floor with the Ryzen. But, um, you know, when you're looking at something like a Ryzen 5 2600, um, or something like that, you, you're getting some good value there and you would be able to, you know, if we're looking at kind of 1080p performance, then you, you're going to do quite well. If we go for AMD and if we go for the Ryzen 5, the 7 would be ideal. So we're looking here at the Ryzen 5, um, the difference between the X, um, and the, uh, non X, the X is a little bit faster. Um, you can see here, speed-wise, a couple of gigahertz more. Um, there's six cores. Um, cores is good for multitasking performance and production. So if we go back to the Intel ones, um, you can see actually some of theirs, like if, when, especially when you get to the 7 and 6 series, they've only got four cores. So my, I actually have the i7-6700. It only has four cores. But from a gaming perspective, it's way better than the Ryzen. But from a production point of view, the Ryzen is generally thought of as, as a little bit better um, there. So if we were going for a Ryzen, these would kind of be our options here. Um, Ryzen 5, that is. Um, the Ryzen 7 would be a little bit better. Eight cores there. Um, for kind of like multitasking, but the price of it goes up. You're looking at a 300 uh, pound um, CPU processor there, which is a lot of money <laughs> just just for a single processor. Um, if you're going for AM, uh, Intel, sorry, um, and we were going for an i7, you're looking at like 350 to to 400 pounds um, for that, and which is real expensive um, and not the kind of budget orientated thing that we are looking for so if we're going here um, I think from a budget point of view I'd be tempted to go for the uh, Ryzen 5 2600 um, on there so we're going to add that in and then see kind of where we go from there really um, I believe the Ryzen 5 generally comes with a CPU cooler but just for the sake of it we'll put in the, the Hyper 212 Evo because it's just a uh, real workhorse of a um a uh, real workhorse of a cooler so that is what keeps your cpu cool basically um motherboard point of view um depending on what you want um now do we want the am4 and yeah okay um depending on what you want would depend on, on what features you you want so you have different sizes here form factors atx micro atx and mini itx that they get smaller as, as you can imagine from the sizes and so if you had a, a smaller case you could go for a slightly smaller one you can put a smaller motherboard in a larger case it just looks a bit weird and generally the smaller motherboards 
um, would be more expensive to have the more features because as you imagine once you get smaller it becomes harder to fit all the features into your motherboard but some people really like having just like a small pc um rather than like a big old thing you know so kind of depends on what you want uh, on there now if we're just going for a box standard kind of atx if we, which is your kind of normal size motherboard um depending on what features you would want streaming wise so generally if you're streaming ideally you want to go ethernet rather than wi-fi because ethernet's just faster and less issues okay so um all motherboards will have an ethernet connection if your motherboard doesn't have an ethernet connection i don't know but not all of them will have wi-fi so you have to kind of bear that in mind some of them will have um you know better options for storage better options for ports and things like that we won't really go into that too much I would I would honestly say like when it comes to a motherboard like set yourself maybe a limit on it whether that's like 75 100 150 pounds and then try and search for the kind of best value you can get for that price point um you know whatever's on offer at that particular time uh, it's generally my my theory when I buy a motherboard you know look it up for some reviews because um it's kind of unless you have a very specific use case for for things you want on your motherboard um you'll generally find that you'll kind of get along okay some of them you know people will just outright be like this is rubbish because of xyz but if we were looking here i'd say that probably you'd want to be spending around if we said something like uh 80 pounds something like that for a motherboard it is important to get a good motherboard because all your components are go into your motherboard you know so it's not like what would be the kind of analogy i'd use it it's the hub of everything you know so you do want something which is going to be able to cope with everything you're you're asking it to do but at the end of the day you know having a spending 300 pounds on a motherboard compared to spending 100 pounds on a motherboard is not going to make you be able to game faster or stream better generally along the line um it will just probably give you more options for certain things so with that said maybe let's go for the um we want probably just a normal size atx um we'll go for the asrock why not sure so um memory wise so memory wise i think if you're streaming definitely you want at least 16 gigs ideally you want more memory used to be super super expensive um it has come down in price recently um if you ideally rather than buying like one 16 gigabyte stick you would want to get two eight gigabyte sticks you could potentially get four four gigabyte sticks if that was on offer compared to the eight the two eights then i would probably go for, go for that but um ideally nowadays you can get like under 100 pounds i've seen 16 gigabytes of ram which is really good um in terms of speed wise as well your motherboard will be able to cope with different speeds so again if you buy a more expensive motherboard you better get faster ram generally amd will work better with faster ram so it's something to consider um it kind of varies a little bit like it's you know you start getting into um realms of what's that phrase um I can't remember now, but um, it, it's like detrimental gains or something like that, where you might gain a little bit, but it will cost you so much more money to actually get that. You know, it's like going from like a, um, it's like having a, a, you know, the fastest graphics card you can get right now, like a 2080 Ti, and then being like, well, I want to just eke out that bit more performance. But the only way you can do that is by buying another 2080 Ti. Uh, detrimental gains, that's the word. Um i think the phrase rather um and that would cost you so much more money and you'd only get a small amount of performance extra from it so you know whereas like if you went from like a, a lower end graphics card like a 1050 up to a 1070 you would see a massive gain for only probably a couple of hundred pounds so bear that in mind um but for the sake of this we'd probably go for something like the 3000 um, megahertz ram shall we say um and we want probably two eights so uh where are we two eight 16 gigabyte two eights and let's try and have a look and see if there's an offer on somewhere 
Um, that's 2133. You do want faster RAM than that, ideally, I think, if you're going for AMD. Uh, 2800 might be okay. It looks like that's the best price we're getting, which is 105 pounds. I've seen it for, I've seen under 100 pounds um, in sales and things like that. So it is possible, but believe me when I say this is way cheaper than it was. There was a point where this was cost you double that, uh, say mid last year. So it's a good time to buy RAM. Well, I mean, necessarily good, but a better time. So yeah, ideally for streaming, if you were gaming, eight gigabytes will do the job. Um, but I would say for streaming, you might want to go up to 16. Unfortunately, there's no real in between. You can't do 12, really. It doesn't really work like that. So, yeah, bear that in mind. Um, storage wise, you're definitely going to want an SSD um, 100% to, to kind of, it won't impact your streaming or recording other than the load times will be, will be significantly quicker. So, um, say, you get something like a 250 gigabyte SSD or, or 256, say, for example. Um, price them, they're dirt cheap right now. Look at this. This one's only 4198 um, Do you have to be kind of careful of what you're getting? For example, M.2s, this is ideal. Like um, The difference between these sizes and things like that is... Um, okay, so you have M.2, which if you have seen them, they're like the tiny little, like they look like memory sticks. They're tiny little things um, and they plug straight into your motherboard and they're generally pretty quick. Um, generally, they're the fastest, although there's not too much difference between them and just a, a normal like um, SSD. But you do have to be careful sometimes where you're plugging it in. You have like um, three gigabytes SATA, I think, and six gigabyte and obviously six gigabytes faster. And that's the one you want, ideally. Um Another thing to think about with mechanical hard drives as well is your SSDs, like your M.2 and your, your regular SSDs, they're silent. Your hard drives, are, like, sound can be quite loud, so <laughs> kind of bear that in mind. Um, if you're recording, you would ideally want a, or even if you're streaming, because you generally back up your streams as well. So if, say, for example, we're going to get this little um, SSD. What you ideally would want as well is... Um, like another hard drive, you could get a relatively slow one, which is what you're going to be saving all your content onto. So say you just wanted a bog standard, cheap, like terabyte, Western Digital Blue. There we go, one terabyte. You'd be able to save all your streams onto there if you wanted to, um, I don't know, just have them backed up. Or if you wanted to have your, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, for your recording saved onto it. So for my system, I have SSDs that I run my games off of, but I save onto a um, mechanical drive. I have not noticed that that has made any effect on speed. I also have not noticed that uploading videos is faster off an SSD. So that's me anecdotally saying that. There might be some um, something along the lines that people find out it is faster to upload off an SSD rather than a hard drive, but I have not found that to be the case, to be honest. Um, certainly not noticeably. Now, this is probably the most important, well, most important one with the CPU is your video card. So, um, if we were going bang for buck here, we're probably going AMD again. Now, if you asked me, if you told, asked me six months ago, bang for buck, I'd just say don't buy a graphics card because the mining craze, Maybe maybe a year ago, probably, but the mining craze was mental, okay? And, um, yeah, it, the prices... Nowadays, the prices of graphics card have come right down, right, right down. So it's actually reasonable now, um, especially, I think, with the 20 series of um, NVIDIA coming out as well. That has pushed the price of the 10 series NVIDIA's down and the AMD cards down. And these AMD cards here, which we'll look at... So primarily, we were looking at a 580... Um, and I'll go into why in a sec, but you know, these prices are around 200 pounds. That was double that, or like 500 pounds when the mining craze was on. It was ridiculous. If you really wanted to go cheap and went second hand, you can get these a lot cheaper nowadays, um, second hand. But you have to bear in mind, it's probably miners selling them. And I don't mean underage, I mean Bitcoin miners. Um, it's probably miners selling them, and they've probably been absolutely wrecked because of it. Because Bitcoin mining use, use and graphics card is consistently at the highest load. And that will, if you drove your car consistently, like at high revs, it will last a lot less longer than if you just drive it normally. So you have to bear that in mind. Um, 
So I think the RX 580 would be the card I would go for personally at the minute for 1080p gaming because I think it hits an absolute sweet spot of being able to get generally on the highest settings just above uh, 60 frames per second which if you were streaming or recording might reduce it down to around 60 frames per second um, with affordability as well. So when I say affordability, buying a gaming PC is expensive. Okay, if you really, really had to bring the price down, you know, you could do. Um, the other option, if you didn't, if you wanted to go for NVIDIA, maybe because you like shadow play more than the MSI kind of equivalent, which is, I can't remember what they call it. Um, uh, it's something like Read Live or something like that. I, I haven't used it though, to be honest. If you did, you could go for a 1060. Um, we got an EVGA one here actually, which is not bad at 200 pounds. Is that the cheapest one? Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. To be completely honest with you, there, I didn't think they were that cheap, but um, I don't know where these are from. But let's add that one, sod it. Two hundred pounds is pretty good. Oh, it looks like it's a little mini card, but still, it it would do the job. And if you really wanted to use shadow play, then you can. Um, the two hundred pounds for ten sixty six gigabyte. Be careful with ten sixties. There's a three gigabyte variation and a six gigabyte variation. Um, Ideally, you would want to go for the six gigabyte, but just be aware, you know, you you could get scammed in that. Way. I don't I don't want to say scammed, misled, shall we say? Um, if we actually go back, um, and have a look, as as I was kind of saying, if you had to save money, you could go ten fifty ti. Um, you're looking at one hundred and fifty there, so saving you fifty pounds. I think for the 50 pounds like i know like listen if money is that tight i wouldn't advise buying a gaming pc <laughs> okay that would be my advice um i would advise going for the the 1060 or the rx 580 depending on what you can get there might be different deals about which work out better for you etc etc you know there's not a lot of difference between an rx 580 and a 1060 um i as i said potentially go for that because i quite like shadow play i think it's pretty good so and i haven't used the amd one but if the amd one's good you might want to go um rx 580 the cheapest one there is saving you about 10 quid something like that oh well that's the four gig so again with the rx 580 there's a four gigabyte and an eight gigabyte ideally you'd probably want to go eight gigabyte um but uh yeah performance wise they're they're virtually identical so kind of bear that in mind um case wise i guess it doesn't matter too much what case the only thing i would say to be wary of is noise level so um if you're recording streaming whatever it is generally you'll be okay if your computer is running at a normal level obviously for a lot of stuff i do asmr content I need my PC to be silent. As a result, I've brought aftermarket fans and that's made it a lot quieter. Um, sometimes if you buy a real cheap um, cheap one, you can get just like really loud fans in there. And so you have to be aware that that could be a problem. But, um, you know, if, if you say went for, I'm trying to look at something that is reasonable, like a, a Cooler Master Masterbox, something like that would be, would be pretty good. Um, it tells you how many drive bays it's got. Sometimes they come with a power supply, sometimes they don't. You can get different deals on, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, personally, I've got an NZXT case, the S340 Elite. I like it a lot. Um, there are newer versions out from NZXT, but, you know, again, cases generally are very personal choice. So, you know, let's add a like 45 pound case and, and just kind of be done with that really um power supply um so what are we hitting here 250 to uh, 230 there 230 watts so really good thing about pc power picker tells you things like that it's telling you what the output is there you want to give it a good overhead there but you don't have to go too high especially if you're not overclocking which i would assume we're not overclocking so i think we would get away with a 400 watt power supply pretty easily you want to you can skimp on power supplies like i'm sure there's a lot of them here which are dirt cheap yeah like 35 quid something like that um this is the important thing to look at though the efficiency um of things so 400 watt here be quite 80 plus gold 
46 quid. Bob your uncle. Um, I have a Corsair uh, CX series, I think it's a 750. Oh, the other thing you might want to look at as well, though, is from a building point of view, whether it's modular or not. Um, when it's not modular, it means the cables are all pre-installed in it and you just hook them up, which sounds good, but those cables can often be a bit disgusting. Um, so this Corsair 450 here, 80 plus bronze, uh, it's pretty nice. I think I'll probably go for that 42. Semi-modular, which means that um, some cables are modular, others you can kind of choose. It, it does make building the case much easier. Uh, what are we up to now? 793 quid. There's me and my budget PC. Um, I believe this does come with uh, the Ryzen 5 2600, does come with its own cooler, so you could potentially get rid of this, save yourself 20 quid. Um, you, 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 know, you could dial this down a little bit to go kind of real budget. Uh, you don't want an optical drive, no one wants that. You want Windows, but uh, I mean, listen, you didn't hear it from me yet, but you can get Windows for like 20 quid nowadays. So, <laughs> you know, each their own. Uh, I'm not saying what means you can get Windows for 20 quid, but you can. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, you know, it, if we take out the windows let's assume maybe you have an older pc it already has windows and you can just copy it over or whatever or you can you can get a discount on windows through some ways um then you know bear that in mind um so yeah you're looking at around about 800 pounds here and i would say that would be a pc that you would be able to stream at most games most modern games nowadays on pretty much the highest settings at 1080p and you'd be able to stream with that so you might think that's a lot of money and you're absolutely right it is a lot of money but um that's where we are now i said you had some other options and you do have some other options so some of you may already have a pc it just might not be it might be quite old might not be that good you might be thinking about streaming or whatever you might play most of your games on um xbox or on playstation 4 well Xbox and PlayStation 4 do allow you to stream directly from them onto certain platforms. Um, so there is that option. The thing about that, I would say, though, is you're limited to the layout that they have when you stream. So they're, they're not, they don't allow you to customize it as well as, you know, programs on your PC do. And, um, you know, you're... I think, I think the Xbox, especially the Xbox One X, is very good. Um, like it's pretty powerful but you know you're you're still running into issues where you could be potentially you know using up uh, horsepower that you could be using in the game so you have that to bear in mind as well um, what you can do is you can have a dual streaming setup so say for example you had even if you had like an old laptop old desktop something like that you could use that um, laptop slash desktop to carry some of the burden of streaming. The way you would do that is generally by using a capture card. Um, and it's the same if you're using doing it from a um, uh, from a console. So if we go on to Amazon here, you can see my choice personal preference is Elgato for capture cards. Um, reason being that... Uh, I like the software that they use. So you can see that um, with uh, Elgato, there's many different ones that they, they have here. So you can go all the way up to a 4K capture card. It costs you four, 329 pounds. I mean, it doesn't really feel like there's too much point in doing that nowadays, but each their own, I guess. Um, but you can have, if we type in Elgato, uh, Sure. Then we can actually have a look at, at some of the options, I guess, that they have. Some of the slightly cheaper and, and other options that they have. Essentially, a decent capture card will set you back about £100, which is, again, a lot of money. But you, um, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a whole PC. So if you did have, like, a, a you know, a, even something like a MacBook, something like that, um, you know, you could buy something like a HD 60s, which is 149. I've seen it for a lot cheaper than that. Um, what you do with this is you hook it up um, one end. You plug it in. Let me see if the pictures can load. There we go. 
So one end will have in, one end will have out. There you go. You put the HDMI, HDMI in, you put the HDMI out, and then that that's what you do basically. So that will go in, this will connect up to your um, PC um, via the USB cable. I can't use that via that. Um, you will plug your HDMI from your console of choice or from your PC. So if you had a, a PC and you didn't think it was, it was able to um, stream, you could, or if you had, I don't know, whatever you were using that had HDMI out, you could you could pop it into there. And then the other one goes out into your monitor you, you're using. So you have, we'll go into like a setup for monitors and stuff like that, ideally. And then, um, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to use the software on your PC and this will do some of the work, this little capture card, your and then your other PC will do some of the work as well. Um, this is quite a good graphics cut here to just show you how that works. So um, this is on um, logicalincrements.com just to give them that I didn't make this graphic. But So you'd have a gaming PC, as I say, whatever it would run the game would be fine. That would have your gaming monitor. You would then have a capture card. It could be an internal capture card. They do those as well. They like the HD60 Pro, for example, like it just depends on, on what you want. The HD60 Pro is, is a bit better than the HD60S. It's just that you have to install it into your computer, and some people might not have that if they have a laptop, for example, so you could just use the HD60S. Um, that will then output to your streaming PC. You'll have a streaming monitor, and then that will output to your, you know, whatever your choice is. So um, it's... Uh, there's options for you to, to be able to do that basically um, and yeah as it kind of says here um, you would you would need less uh, your your gaming PC your dedicated streaming PC wouldn't need to have a graphics card or anything like that because it's just literally relaying a picture um, it would need to have a, a fairly decent um, uh, CPU but but it wouldn't need what we kind of made it in here it could have a lot less so you know you could pick something up for a much cheaper price or if you already had a laptop something like that so if for example you had a laptop you had your um, PS4 or whatever you could go along those lines and um, you know stream that way take a bit of pressure off your uh, PS4 or Xbox you could set up all the nice overlays and things like that that you want to do on your laptop have that running you can use that as your streaming monitor so you can monitor chat and stuff like that and then still play your game on whatever your gaming monitor of choice is even if it's a tv etc so it's good it's that and that's a decently cheap setup you know if you i don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that people have a laptop and a um xbox it's still quite a lot of money <laughs> and you can't really you know but if it was something you're thinking of doing full time, you know, you can invest. And I think like if it's something that people really want to do and really go for it, like you have to spend some money um, and you can generally, I believe you can get into it with a very professional setup for less than a thousand pounds, which some people might be like, oh, yeah, a thousand pounds, good one. But it's, you know, that... It's not a cheap uh, profession to kind of get into if you don't have any of the equipment to begin with. Um, what other things do you need? Um, well, you probably need two two other things, which is a webcam and a microphone. So uh, the webcam. Uh, let's let's have a look at webcams on Amazon. What they have. The number one choice, I think, for most people is the Logitech C920. Like that is such a work. It's been out for years. It's such a good uh, webcam. I have it. Like it does the job. It just, it you know, in the words of Tom, ha um, T Todd Howard, sorry, it just works. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, you can get loads and loads of other ones. Uh, you can even get a Logitech 4K one. I wouldn't even bother with that, frankly. It's not even worth it. Um, you can get slightly different like versions of the C9. 20 there's like a c922 um which will do slightly different things um if you literally just want you know a little box with yourself in the corner on your stream i think a c920 
is absolutely what you need. They do slightly fancier ones. Um, I think Razer do a, a fancier one. The Kio, is it? Yes, yeah, 100 pounds. So it's a bit more expensive. Um, has this like light ring in it as well, which can be quite good. Um, you want to have something fairly decent in terms of setup. You have to think about the lighting of the area as well. You can kind of have a look what you do. Sometimes, you know, you go on Twitch or whatever and you look at streamers and they're just like almost like they're in the dark. And, um, it's not a great look. If you had something like a, um, a DSLR uh, camera, then you can actually use something called a cam link. So, um, Elgato do this, it's £120. Um, and yeah, you can literally have your camera set up like this. <laughs> I love the way he's got Fortnite on there. Um, yeah, you can have your camera kind of set up like that and use the camera you've got, um, which will give you really good quality if you have a good camera, obviously. I haven't used it, so I don't know what the consensus is around it. Um, you'd need to use v USB 3. I imagine it would, you would uh, need a, a especially if you're going to 4k you would need a hefty cpu to be able to run that and stream and do all that stuff at the same time but if you were using a separate um laptop then you wouldn't have to worry about the gaming performance being hit or anything like that so it's a viable option i think and i've seen a lot of professionals use um dslr i don't know if they use this particular product or whatever um but yeah i've seen a lot of them use it um, so again an option if you already had some equipment I like the idea of being able to use current equipment that, that you already have rather than um, you know spend money on uh, other things you know other new things that maybe you know you wouldn't you wouldn't use again um, and I guess the good thing for like this as well especially is like if you were just recording videos um, you know vlogs or whatever you can you could use this as well so it would have like a multitude whereas a webcam wouldn't be great webcams are fine if you've just got a little corner but like a webcam full screen not good uh not good um microphone wise microphone wise is pretty important because um you want to have the best what would be the term you want to have as good a um quality audio as you can have but you don't need to go crazy uh, that is a very important thing um i personally go like a blue yeti um i don't know they don't seem to be showing me it kind of straight up just on its own interesting uh so i use a, a blue yeti pro which is the slight, oh here we go slightly more expensive they do have different options um blue blue also um I think they got brought out by Logitech uh, recently, but they do, they make great microphones. The thing you have to bear in mind is they're also pretty expensive microphones. So a, a normal Blue Yeti will cost you, I've seen it cheaper than £119. I've seen it about £80 in a sale, but it will cost you. They do a nano version now, which is pretty cool. Um, it's probably absolutely fine for streaming. It, you lose a few of the options. Um, you only get like two different patterns on it, but honestly, I've never even used the different patterns on my uh, Yeti yeah, e Pro. Well, I don't even use it via USB, but this plugs in basically via USB, looking at different colors and everything. It's pretty cool, actually. It's a really nice little um, microphone. So I'd recommend that. A bit cheaper. It's a bit more out of the way. It's going to give you really good quality um, You know, for what you're doing. Um, it's up to you. You, you. you might, if you had the money, you'd probably be better off going for the... Uh, the, the, Ye the Yeti, not the Yeti Nano. I wouldn't necessarily advise the Snowball. Um, but it's not bad, basically. Um, there's, there's my Yeti Pro. Uh, or, uh, there's a variety of different ones you can get, different colours, etc., etc. You can sometimes get in a bundle. Look, look at that one. Blue, Black Yeti, USB microphone, and Far Cry PC streamer bundle. It's only ninety nine ninety nine, so it's cheaper than those. And it's all black. And you get a copy of Far Cry 5 with it, so that's pretty good. If you didn't have Far Cry 5, or whatever. Um... So for some weird reason, that's like cheaper than just buying it on its own. You can't even give away Far Cry 5. They can't even give it away. So yeah, um, that's kind of, you know, microphone, um, the uh, webcam, important things to set up. The other things you might want to think about is ideally you want a two monitor set up. Um, so if you've got a PC with a monitor, ideally you'd probably want to get a second monitor. 
you can get second monitors real cheap um if we go to uh p monitor little 24 inch monitor or 21 inch you would want something small because all you're gonna have on that is probably your streaming software chat you know stuff like that on there um, for you to do and you don't need to use it for anything else or bringing up any web pages or anything like that you might want to do um, so you really wouldn't need anything special you can get that for like 85 pounds something like that nowadays um, yeah if you if if you're using like a second streaming pc um, which was a laptop or something like that then obviously you wouldn't need the monitor but you know it's just something to kind of take into account i guess oh i should say that the alternative to elgato for capture cards would be ava media i haven't used an ava media card so i don't I couldn't um that's actually not true. I did used to have an Avermedia card a long time ago and I didn't really like the software that much. I found the Elgato better, but the software may have improved. So there is an option um if you just don't like Elgato um on there as well. So all in all, I think um uh if we kind of added it up can't I we can't really add things up here, but I think under a thousand pounds you can get yourself streaming um really nicely you can have a pc that will be able to play most games at 1080p high settings 60 frames per second there's no point going higher than 60 frames because you can't watch anything higher than 60 frames per second currently um or you could you know or there are different options if you wanted to stream from your uh console etc things like that the thing i would say is it's never ever been easier nowadays to stream so bear that in mind um, and it will never be a better time to get into streaming or recording videos than now because you know everything you know more and more people do it every day so it kind of becomes tougher every day to get started in it um, it requires hard work and dedication but if you can do that then you probably will be rewarded with uh, something which potentially you can make some money off of, but also just great experience, I guess. So yeah, I think that concludes. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll be happy to kind of answer them. Or if you have any alternatives as well, let me know. Um, but till then, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.